Hey, hey, mamas, and welcome to another episode of our Healthy Foods in Pregnancy series. Today is part four, and we are going to go over healthy food swaps in pregnancy, um, tips and tricks from a midwife, right? These are real life tricks and tips that I give not only to my own clients, but that I perform in my own life too. So before I begin, my name is Midwife Kyra, and I believe in truly natural birth because I know that it makes for better birth experiences. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, and don't forget to join in in the comments below. Let us know what you think about today's episode. So let's go ahead and jump right in. If you've been following us, part one was, uh, let's see, healthy habits of healthy pregnancies. Nutrition is one of the things that midwives talk about at every appointment in pregnancy, and that was a great little tidbit of information for you guys there. Part two, foods to add into your diet in pregnancy. That was really fun. When we moved into part three, which was foods to avoid in pregnancy. This week, we're gonna talk about healthy food swaps. So a little backstory on me, I actually, many, many years ago, if you missed it in one of the previous episodes, I was actually diagnosed diabetic at around the age of 15. One of the first things I did when I became an adult was learned how to cut out things like high fructose corn syrup and trans fats. So that's actually one of the first things I'm gonna ask my mamas out here watching this video to do as well. So avoiding trans fats and high fructose corn syrup is not as easy as you think in your pregnancy if you haven't been able to do this before. So the number one thing you need to learn from today is how to read a nutrition label. Um, it's really important if you don't know how to read a nutrition label that you go ahead and you start looking that up immediately because you're gonna pick up on keywords like hydrogenated oils, mono and disaccharides, high fructose corn syrup, trans fats in your food. These are things you definitely want to avoid. Not only are they linked to um, heart disease throughout your entire life, but also it increases the risk of gestational diabetes in your pregnancy. So these are not completely harmless foods. Now, uh, it took me an entire year to cut out high fructose corn syrup the first time that I decided to try. So again, these are healthy food swaps. I don't expect you to be perfect or start over fresh today, but these are little things that you can do to maintain a healthy pregnancy and a healthy breastfeeding. So what are some easy ways to avoid hydrogenated oils, which are trans fats and high fructose corn syrup? Well, first of all, reading your labels. Number two, look for the word natural on the label. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you can just breeze by and not have to read the ingredients list, but I do find that in general when you're at the store, it's less of the word organic and more of the word natural that'll help you be able to avoid these things in your food. For example, peanut butter. That's the easiest thing I can tell you today to swap in your pregnancy is eating a natural peanut butter or a natural almond butter made with three ingredients or less. That should be peanuts, maybe salt, I don't even know what the third ingredient would be. Maybe two ingredients, right? So let's say you are currently eating Jif. If you look at the back of your Jif container, it's gonna say hydrogenated oils and a bunch of other ingredients. But if you switch to Jif natural, you're gonna find that there are no high fructose corn syrup, no hydrogenated oils. That's just a simple, simple tip to avoid it. Another thing you can do is swap from chips to trail mix. Now, not all chips are gonna have hydrogenated oils or high fructose corn syrup in them, but if you switch to trail mix, you're much more likely to find a, a natural, healthy food swap that not only tastes great, but has a lot of protein and fats and magnesium, which are all great for you during your pregnancy. Um, another thing, another healthy food swap would be to swap your carbs for fats and proteins. So what does this look like? Well, I can tell you from experience that out of all of my moms in the history of my practice, I've been practicing for 10 years, who have ever had um, preeclampsia, the one thing all these moms had in common was eating cereal for breakfast. Now, I know what you're gonna say, there are a ton of healthy cereals on the market. This isn't about the type of cereal you're eating. It's about taking away that opportunity for healthy fats and healthy proteins, which are the building block of your baby and your baby's brain and your pregnancy, and swapping them for empty carbs, which eventually just turn to sugar. So instead of cereal, I wanna encourage you guys to have two or three eggs. And if you need some carbs, how about some um, toast? Not white bread, but maybe some of those really healthy breads that are out there, healthier, I guess I should say. Remember to read your labels. No high fructose corn syrup, no hydrogenated oils. Another way you can swap your proteins and fats for carbs is dessert. Yeah, I really said that, dessert. Okay, so 
Many times in pregnancy, you're going to have a sweet tooth. And in the absence of gestational diabetes, there's no reason why you can't have and indulge a little bit in that sweet tooth. But instead of doing something like cookies, particularly store-bought full of high fructose corn syrup and hydrogenated oils, instead of cookies where you could possibly consider making them from home, this midwife is actually going to recommend that you consider ice cream. Ice cream has full fat dairy, which helps you feel fuller longer. It has a ton of protein and a ton of healthy fat, which again are the building blocks of your pregnancy. So if the choice is ice cream full of fat and healthy protein versus cookies, which are just plain carbs and sugar and a lot of the other junk we've already mentioned, my suggestion is go for the ice cream, right? I know that's a wild idea, but it is definitely a helpful suggestion. There are other things you can do for dessert too. My favorite dessert, dark chocolate and peanut butter. Now I know dark chocolate definitely has some caffeine in it, so for those of you who are having coffee daily, you may need to consider this. But if you're gonna get a good, clean, and maybe even European chocolate, this is a great option for you that has a ton of health benefits, including uh, magnesium, protein, and it just kicks that sweet tooth in a healthy way. Or recently I got into chocolate and peanut butter dipped bananas. Oh my God, you guys, this is a great, high protein, high fat snack that has some carbs, but in a way that you can digest them more easily because it's not a naked carb. Now, if you don't know what a naked carb is, you need to go back to my previous videos in this series and learn about naked carbs. Um, so for breakfast, let's go back to breakfast real quick. Let's talk about some other healthy food swaps we could do for breakfast. What about oatmeal over cereal? Oatmeal is high in iron, especially if you soak it overnight, rinse it, and cook it slow. It's typically high in protein, and you can even do great recipes such as things called overnight oats, adding in some fruits, adding in some proteins, adding in some flax seeds or other types of nuts and seeds into your protein, into your oatmeal. And now you have a nutritious, packed, high protein breakfast compared to just cereal, which is sugar and carbs, right? What about a protein shake instead of skipping breakfast? One of the worst things you can do in your pregnancy, mamas, is skip breakfast. I know you're probably not in the mood to eat. That may require you to wake up a little earlier and start your day a little sooner or maybe go for a walk. But instead of skipping breakfast, I wanna encourage you mamas to pack in protein. The average pregnant woman needs about 75 to 80 grams, absolute minimum of protein in her pregnancy each day. If you're skipping breakfast, that's gonna be really, really challenging to do. So what about a protein shake? Um, I also like to sneak in green leafy vegetables in my protein shakes. So you can have a protein um, powder. I typically recommend five ingredients or less. Make sure you're reading your labels. Mixed with almond milk or full fat dairy or now oat milk has a ton of healthy fats in it. And you can add in a little bit of spinach. So you'll never taste those green leafy vegetables, right? And you get that nutrition pack first thing in the morning, especially if you're doing it in place of skipping breakfast. So I want you guys to consider that. Um, what about baked oatmeal cups versus muffins? Muffins are not a health food. I don't care how you pack them. Muffins are not a health food. But if you slow uh, soak, rinse, and bake oatmeal by adding in a couple of little healthy fats and nutrition like we talked about earlier, you can actually make muffins, healthy muffins, on the go. They're called oatmeal cups. You can look those up on Pinterest. We have a very active Pinterest page if you guys are looking for some info on that. I would also recommend swapping honey for jelly. Now both are packed with sugar, but honey is less processed, more in its natural form, whereas jelly definitely has some sketchy ingredients most of the time and really doesn't have any added benefits to it. So that's something to consider as well. Now lunches. Um, what about some healthy lunch swaps? So first of all, you need to remember you're gonna eat lunch every day. This is not a surprise. You're gonna be hungry today at lunch. You're gonna be hungry tomorrow at lunch. So we need to be meal planning. And I can speak for myself in this as well. I need to get back on top of my meal planning. You're going to be hungry for lunch every day. It costs a fortune to have to eat lunch on the fly by eating out, picking things up to go, or even ordering in restaurants. And so by prepping your lunch in advance, you can choose those high-protein, high-fat lunches over junk or quick food or heavily processed food. So for example, let's say you want to do tuna salad. Tuna is allowed while you're pregnant. What if instead of mayonnaise, you substituted um, avocado. 
What if instead of just tuna, you also added avocado and egg? So now you have this really nutritious, dense, protein-packed lunch on the go. Now, if you're in your first trimester, you're probably thinking, no way am I eating tuna or eggs for breakfast. So maybe you need sandwich meats. Well, if you didn't read before, it's really important that you reheat, heat up your sandwich meats um, before you're going to eat them while you're pregnant. But did you know that in the attempt to avoid, uh, avoid nitrates and nitrites, you can actually just pick a cleaner brand. For example, compared to Oscar Mayer, which does have some nitrate, nitrite free food, you can always count on the brand, I think it's called Applegate Farms. They almost never, in fact, I don't know if I've ever seen them have anything with nitrates or nitrites in it. Very, very clean. So instead of standing around the store and reading labels, you can jump straight into a brand that you know you can trust to give you nutritious foods in your food choices. Um, if you're going to be doing salads, iceberg is simply water, iceberg lettuce. What if you swapped your iceberg for romaine or kale? It doesn't really have that much of a difference in taste. Definitely has that crunchy texture you're looking for, but more than water, it also is packed with vitamin C and a bunch of other different vitamins like K that are really, really good for you in your pregnancy. For dinner, we could think about healthy food swaps for dinner that are pretty easy. Now, I'm not asking you to change your whole culture. I live in the South in Cajun country where we have rice at almost every meal. Cajuns who are gestationally diabetic are one of my hardest challenges in pregnancy to make those lifestyle changes that are needed to improve their health, but it can be done. So first of all, instead of pasta, I'm also Italian, instead of pasta, what about spaghetti squash? Or now they even have like lentil pastas, which are gluten-free and full of extra protein that are really, really good for you when you're pregnant and they add a little more texture and flavor to your foods. What about spaghetti squash? This is a good option as well if you're looking to eat a whole food, plant-based, uh, nutritious uh, diet. Spaghetti squash in the, in the place of pasta can be something that you can do there too. Cauliflower rice instead of white rice. If you're dealing with gestational diabetes, cauliflower rice is typically, not always, but typically one of the easiest things you can do to make those adjustments in your glucose levels in your pregnancy. But you guys, if you cook cauliflower rice correctly, it tastes great and it also has some extra nutrition without all those unnecessary carbs that you can use in your pregnancy. Um, last but definitely not least, what about dessert? I'm sure that's what you guys want to hear me talk about, so let's go ahead and tackle that. We talked um, in the recent parts of the series about not eating naked carbs, such as naked fruit. Fruit has a bunch of antioxidants and a lot of health benefits for you when you're pregnant, but let's face it, it also has a ton of carbs and a ton of sugar. So you never want to eat fruit by itself. You always want to mix fruit with a fr fruit with a fat or a protein. For example, instead of candy, you can have chocolate and peanut butter dipped bananas. Instead of candy, you can have blackberries. That season's coming. Oh my goodness, my family's gotten into blackberries recently and it's just absolutely amazing. You might wanna mix that blackberry with string cheese. Now that's not so much of a dessert such as full fat yogurt would be compared to non-fat yogurt. One of the easiest food swaps in your pregnancy, right, is changing the way you think about food. You want to eat the skin on the chicken, the full fat of the dairy and the yolk of the egg. Eat food the way that God designed it. And so if you're gonna eat yogurt, you wanna eat full fat yogurt. You guys, it's so rich and full of flavor. You can put on a little honey, you can add some granola or some nuts and seeds, but these are little tips that you can do to spice up dessert. What about homemade banana bread with walnuts instead of cake? I mean, it's essentially cake, but it has all the healthy ingredients that you're making from home. A lot of times you can even swap the sugar for things like applesauce, which adds a little bit of extra fiber to your diet and helps you uh, move your bowels regularly and has a bunch of tips like that. What about smoothies instead of ice cream? Now, in pregnancy, if you're gonna do a smoothie, I always recommend you go ahead and throw in at least half a scoop of protein powder, because what an opportunity missed to swap a protein-rich meal or even a dessert for a smoothie. But you can add in some of those really great flavored protein powders. I saw some recently that were like fruity pebbles. Now, let's be honest, I didn't read the ingredients list. It probably has dyes in it. But you can look at your uh, protein powders and put them in a smoothie, add in some fruit, some full fat dairy, and just get all that nutrition packed into one dessert. 
This is definitely better than ice cream. Protein, uh, protein shakes are definitely better than ice cream if you've got a sweet tooth. And if you make it thick enough, you can still eat it with a spoon. Um, let me just check my notes one more thing. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Let's see. Snacks. Oh my gosh. If you're pregnant, I hope you're snacking. What a great way to get in your protein throughout your day. Breakfast. Snack. Lunch. Snack. Dinner. Late night snack. I want you guys snacking on protein-rich foods all day long. So how are we going to do that? Boiled eggs. Seven grams of protein per boiled egg. You can typically eat two in a sitting. Great snack idea. Um, vegetables with hummus. Hummus typically has a lot of fat and a lot of protein. Great, great idea. You can also do things like cottage cheese instead because it also has high fat and high protein. Um, edamame. Uh, sticks of cheese. Cheese sticks with um, nuts and seeds on the side. Trail mix instead of chips. Protein cookies or fat bombs instead of, I don't know, what do people pick up on the go? French fries? Um, nuts and seeds. Uh, protein and smoothies, all the things that we talked about, and I'm going to tackle again chocolate, peanut butter, and maybe even bananas. The more you're choosing these, ooh, you saw that, the more you're choosing these high protein, high fat foods, the more satisfied you're going to be, the less moody you're going to be, the better your glucose levels are going to be. And these are just little tiny steps toward building a lifestyle of health and nutrition based off what you put into your mouth. So these are tips that I've used in my life, and I hope that you guys can use them in your pregnancies. One of the best things I can tell you is if you don't know where to start, start with a seven-day diet log. There's nothing that can help you be more accountable to yourself than actually looking at what you're eating. It makes a huge difference. It can be very good positive reinforcement. It's also a great starting point on how to make changes that may be necessary. If you guys have any questions or any comments, go ahead and post them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you next Midwife Monday for the fifth part of our health food series in pregnancy. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.